If you want to outrank your Google Ads competitors and pay less in the process, then mastering quality score is going to be an essential part of your success. You see, when it comes to Google Ads, ad rank, which is what determines if your ad is in the first spot or nowhere to be seen, is a factor of your max cost per click bid times your quality score times your expected impact of ad extensions. So understanding how to be successful at quality score is a third of your success in terms of your ad actually appearing on the Google search results page. In this video, I wanna walk you through what quality score is and give you the 80-20 of what matters and how to actually audit your quality score so that you understand how to be successful and improve it uh, on an ongoing basis. Now, if you're watching this video and you're wondering why you should be listening to me, my name is Sylvie Perez. I'm the founder of Ad Conversion. In addition to being a digital advertising academy where we have free courses taught by legit B2B practitioners, we also have an agency where we run ads for companies like Active Campaign, Mixed Panel Nets by Checker, and we're managing seven figure ad budgets in Google Ads, in paid search, uh, driving free trials, driving demo requests. And what I'm gonna walk you through in this video is the exact same thing that I would tell my team internally on how to actually improve and optimize their quality score. So let's dive into it. Step number one is you need to go into your Google Ad account navigate over to the keyword section. And then once you're here in the keyword section, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you modify your columns and you're gonna add quality score, ad relevance, landing page experience, and expect a click-through rate to your columns so you can understand what your quality score performance is. Now, giving you a quick 60 second crash course on quality score, quality score is a number from one to 10, one being the worst, 10 being the best, and it is a measure of relevance. So quality score is this genius thing that Google released in 2005, which basically created what I consider the holy trinity of search advertising, where basically Google is rewarding advertisers with lower cost per clicks and higher ad rank, more visibility, based on how well of a job they do in terms of being relevant to what people are searching for. So quality score, that number from one to 10, what determines if your ad has a, or your keyword has a quality score of one or 10 is a factor of three different components, which you can see right here. You've got ad relevance, you've got landing page experience, and you've got expected click-through rate. So your ad relevance is how relevant is your keyword to your ads. It's really just a factor of making sure if you're bidding on a certain keyword, you have it reflected in your ad copy, so that way you create that strong message match. Landing page experience takes into consideration not just your ad and the keyword, but also the, the landing page itself. So not just the superficial of having the keyword in your landing page, that of course matters, but it's also taking into consideration other things as well. So it's also taking into consideration the page load time of your landing page. Is it desktop and mobile optimized? Um, how much content do you have on the page? How is it structured in terms of your title tags, your H1s, your H2s? Very much the same components that go into crawling websites organically on the SEO side is how Google makes these determinations on how good of a job you're doing in terms of your landing page experience. And then the last one here is expected click-through rate. Expected click-through rate is Google's perception on how often they think your ad will be clicked. This one is the least in your control, and in my experience, auditing Google ad accounts, this is usually the number one thing that hurts quality score across the board more than anything else. And we can get into how to improve each one later in this video, but just understand this is Google's perception on how well they think you're gonna perform for this keyword based on your ad performance and your historical click-through rates. So go ahead and modify your columns and add these different variables to your keyword column and once you've done that, you're gonna go ahead and click download and we're gonna download this into an Excel CSV and I'm gonna show you how to use pivot tables. I learned this from Brad Geddes years ago and it's still applicable and relevant and helpful. And I'm gonna show you how to do this for free using Excel so that you can, in the future, if you wanna get fancy, you can use some sort of tool, you can automate this somehow, but it's really not necessary as a starting point, you can just use Excel. So go ahead and download this into a keyword report and let's open that up. Okay, so I'm here in my keyword report that I just downloaded, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up and I'm gonna format it into a table so then we can summarize it into a pivot table. If you're not familiar with Excel, this is a skill that as an advertiser, you just need to know the dividends are uh, substantial, so try to follow along as best you can, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna delete these total rows here on the bottom of our table just so it doesn't disrupt any uh, data. And if you're not familiar with Excel, you can just hold Command, go down. It'll allow you to go up and down to the side. If you hold Shift with it, then you can mass bulk uh, select different items. 
Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our entire table and we're gonna summarize it into a pivot table. So I'm gonna click here on my first column and I'm gonna do Command A or Control A, I believe, if you're on a Windows. And then it's gonna select my entire table and I'm gonna click Insert, Pivot Table, click OK. And now what it's gonna do is it's going to allow me to now summarize all of the information. So each individual keyword has its own quality score across you know thousands of campaigns, depending on how active you are. And being able to just cross-reference that all individually on a line item by line item basis is just not feasible. So that's where we use pivot tables to summarize large amounts of data to allow us to get insights really simply. So once you have your pivot table here, what you're gonna do is you're going to search for quality score and you're gonna add quality score to your rows. And then you're gonna look up keyword and you're gonna add keyword to your values. And now what you're gonna do, or sorry, let me reverse that. You're gonna do quality score in your rows, keyword to your values. And then now what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove blanks. So if you notice, like in this case, I have 205 enabled keywords for this account and you can see 56 have this dash dash, which is a blank. Uh, these are keywords that maybe they just haven't rendered in the auction, they haven't gotten enough impressions, so there's not an, an associated quality score, which is completely normal. So just go ahead and uncheck that. So now we're only seeing keywords that actually have an assigned quality score. So just from this one action, and we're going to go deeper in this, you can see that I can already understand more or less what's the health of my quality score overall in this account for my enabled keywords. So just to easily follow along, I'm going to update this to say quality score. And then now what I wanna do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna add a percentage formula just to really understand what's my percentage by uh, quality score. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna just take B4 and we're gonna create an absolute reference of B14, the total. And I'm gonna just drag this down and then I'm gonna put it as a percentage. We have a pretty good amount of keywords that are above seven. This is actually really healthy. In a lot of accounts, they, they don't have this. And ideally, kind of what my rule of thumb is, is ideally 70% of my keywords have above seven quality score. And you can see that is the case here with this account. Uh, but if you, let's say this wasn't the case, and you know we, we do have 9% of our keywords with a quality score of three, uh, five, and 10% and at six, and so on and so forth. This is where we can start to drill down into those three different parameters of quality score to understand what's hurting our quality score. So. Uh, assuming now the question is, all right, uh, why, why don't I have, you know, hundred percent of my keywords above seven, which by the way, is not realistic. And the other thing to note too, when you're doing this analysis of quality score right now, we're doing it across all your enabled keywords, but just know you, you can't judge your account equally based on the types of campaigns that you're running. So, uh, if you're running branded search campaigns, typically you have higher quality scores. If you're running competitive search campaigns, typically you have lower quality scores just by the factor that you might not be able to get away with having your keyword uh, reflect your competitor in your ad copy because of trademark issues. So just know that quality score will vary differently depending on the campaign theme. Um, maybe a, a topic for another day, but this is how you're gonna get your overall quality score. And now let's go ahead and drill into the variables, ad relevance, landing page experience, expected click-through rate to understand which one is hurting us. Where do we need to focus our efforts in terms of improving quality score? So I'm gonna go ahead and now remove quality score and I'm going to search uh, ad relevance and I'm gonna add relevance here to my table. I'm gonna remove the blanks. I'm just gonna update my formula here so that it makes sense now. Drag this down and get rid of this. And now I can see uh, in this case I have a 72% of my keywords have above average ad relevance. This is really great. Uh, if you have above average ad relevance, this means you did a good job grouping your ad groups and your keywords, and then writing relevant ad copy to reflect your keywords. Ad relevance is a 100% in your control in terms of a factor that you can manipulate. So if you notice for your account, you have a lot of keywords that are below average or average, this might mean that your ad groups have too many keywords within it and you might need to consider further separating them out or you need to reflect and revise your ad copy and create more headline variations, more descriptions to include the keywords that have these below average or average scores so you can try to boost the, the, the relevance for those specific keywords. Now from here, what you could do in your uh, pivot table, which is quite nice, is if you come into the pivot table, you can add a filter 
and you can filter down further, uh, which is quite cool. So like I can come in here and I can filter down further to understand what's going on. And then you can also here in your pivot table, add a slicer and you can add a slicer of keyword ad group. So if you wanted to drill in further and understand which keywords have a below average um, you know, relevance, you can use a slicer to do that. Or what you can simply do is you can come here and you can drag keyword underneath ad relevance and then it'll allow you to see what are the keywords that have the worst ad relevance underneath those different variables. So you can kind of drill into the data further, which is quite nice. So this is our ad relevance. So in this case, we don't have an ad relevance problem. We're looking pretty healthy. Moving on to the next thing, we're gonna do landing page experience. And I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my table. And I can see in uh, this instance, I'm gonna just update my formula. So in this case, for landing page experience, 62% uh, of my keywords have above average landing page experience. That's really healthy. So it, overall, we did a good job with this account in terms of our quality score. But if this wasn't the case, let's say the majority of my keywords had an average or below average landing page experience, then this means I need to go to work on actually improving the post-click experience. So kind of a, a quick checklist of things for you to consider when improving your landing page experience is number one, how is the actual performance of the page in terms of speed? Is it mobile optimized? Is it desktop optimized? There's a great tool that I recommend that you check out called Page Speed Insights if you're not familiar with it. And it'll allow you to drop a URL and then it'll give you a lot of technical recommendations to improve the performance of that specific page. And um, news alert, a lot of times it's on mobile. You gotta do a lot of work on mobile to get it, uh, have, having a really good score. So that's one really uh, tactical thing I recommend. Second thing is you're gonna wanna make sure that you're following SEO best practices for your landing pages to improve your landing page experience. So just like how Google crawls pages organically, they're using same, the same mechanisms, the same crawlers to, to essentially achieve the same goal. Uh, so you wanna make sure that your page is technically written. You're using H1s, H2s, H3s. Uh, you're differentiating things. You have, you know, um, anchor links when relevant. You have um, like text for your images so they understand what's the, the image referring to and, and all these different kind of technical nuances around SEO. You wanna apply the same methodology and thought process to your landing pages as well. Uh, sometimes in my experience, when it comes to like dealing with pages that just can't, get a good landing page experience a lot of times it's just a matter of you need to add more content to the page so if you have a very small page typically you're dinged in terms of a landing page experience versus if you have a longer form page we typically find better experience in terms of landing page experiences so just something to take into consideration the one thing i will mention though is like you need to balance landing page experience and conversion rates because at the end of the day you could have an amazing landing page experience but if you optimize your page just to satisfy quality score and no one's converting, then you're kind of defeating the purpose, right? And quality score really should just be seen as a leverage of cost, right? It's, it's a mechanism that allows you to cut down cost to increase visibility. But if you're not converting in the first place and you're not driving a positive return, improving your quality score isn't gonna be the game changer, right? There's a, there's a flaw in terms of your approach and your economics and your strategy. So it's really just a lever for you to pull on. So that's our landing page experience. And then finally, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our expected click-through rate. So we're gonna drop that in here. And you can see it's a little bit different now. And, and from my experience, this is usually the hardest one to improve. And you can see we've got uh, seven and 31. We've got 38% that are average or below average for our expected click-through rate. So in terms of improving expected click-through rate, this takes a lot of work. So there's a few factors here. Number one, you wanna make sure you're using ad extensions. You're using as many ad extensions as possible. The, the, the idea here is expected click-through rate is a measure of how Google perceives your ads will be clicked. So the more things you can do to improve your click-through rate, the better off you'll be at improving your expected click-through rate. Ad extensions make your, large, uh, make your ads larger. They provide more information to the searcher. So that allows you to get a higher CTR. So ad extensions to prioritize, use as many as you can, but I would say site links, image extensions, logo, business name, structured snippet, uh, call outs, all great extensions for you to take advantage of uh, if possible. And from there, the other thing I would recommend is that at least minimum on a monthly basis, you are testing new ads 
on an ongoing consistent basis because this is where most people just kind of they create some sort of ad on Google and then they just forget about it and they don't really check it but like actually monitoring your click through rate month over month and then creating new ads to beat your control it's this is like the boring work that we know we should be doing that we don't do and if you haven't been doing it this is where it comes to bite you in terms of your quality score right here with this factor of your expected click through rate it's going to hurt you so ad testing on a consistent basis and then the third and final one is just doing a better job at writing ad copy so uh, i've actually created a separate video on how to write uh, responsive search ads and i talk about strategic pinning but oftentimes most advertisers on google their ads just suck like just straight up and if you did a better job at writing more compelling ads you would get a higher click-through rate which will allow you to improve your expected click-through rate and then i guess one bonus one here as well is Equally important in terms of the effectiveness of your ad is your targeting. So if you don't have a strong negative keyword list in place, you're gonna be showing up for a lot of irrelevant impressions. If you're showing up for a lot of irrelevant impressions, that means you're not gonna get clicks from those people anyways. That's gonna bring down your overall click-through rate, which will come here to bite you in the butt. Uh, in addition to that, your match types, how broad are you being? Are you relevant? Are you, are you ready for that level of scale? So if you're using broad match or phrase match, but you don't have a strong native keyword list in place, a lot of irrelevant search terms are appearing, you might wanna consider dialing down to exact match and then scale vertically through there going across these different match types. So a lot to consider. I hope this video was helpful and it gave you a crash course on how to consider and think about quality score. I wanted to make it super practical and tactical because I remember when I was first starting out with Google Ads, there was a lot of like airy, fluffy videos on quality score and it didn't allow me to understand how to pragmat pragmatically dissect and understand how to improve my quality score. So that is why I wanted to show you this method of using pivot tables that I learned from Brad Geddes years ago, and I still use to this day for a lot of our client accounts and prospective accounts that we're auditing. If you wanna go deeper into quality score, then check out this article that I wrote that goes into quality score. And it's basically what we talked about in this video, but it's written up for you so you can kind of go through everything step by step. So definitely check this out. I'll have it in the description box down below. And if you're not a part of ad conversion yet and you're a B2B marketer and you want to level up your advertising skill set, then definitely check us out at adconversion.com and join. It takes less than 90 seconds and you're going to get access to all of our free on-demand courses taught by real, legit B2B practitioners that are in the trenches running ads for different SaaS companies and B2B organizations. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.